Well, hey everyone, today is December 16th. Therefore, we are in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16. This was kind of a heavy, heavy chapter, wasn't it? You know, yesterday in chapter 15, we had all of the lost things and we, we had three stories. Here, we pretty much just have two stories, but they're oh so heavy, aren't they? Challenging. Well, let's dive in. We have this parable of the shrewd manager, a dishonored steward. It starts out with, there once was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting the employer's money. This is about money and property. Really what Jesus is saying here is we're all going to have to give an account someday of how, how we live our life. You know, that, that's a common theme we see in, in Luke. If you want to see the kingdom of God, you have to live this way. Well, how do, how do we ha handle money and property? The late great theologian, Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon is one of my, my favorite dead theologians. He's the guy who calls our tears liquid prayers. He says this, we will all have to give an account in regard to our time, our talents, and our resources, our influence, our substance. Let me try that again, okay? He says, we will all have to give an account in regard to our time, our talents, our substance, and our influence. Someday, we will have to give an account. Here, the boss fires, fires the employee. The steward is now unemployed. And so the steward makes friends with the master's debtors, and he settles the debts for less than they owed. Jesus says, what if, what if we pursued the kingdom of God like we pursue profit and pleasure? Wow, huh? What if we pursued the kingdom of God like that? Then we get a little segment about investing. Now here's the deal. It's okay to invest our all of these things, our, our, our time, our talents, our, our substance, and, and our influence, our money. It's okay to invest our money. Um, I have a retirement account from the church that, that, you know, that I invest in. So Jesus isn't saying that it's wrong to do that. You know, sometimes, though, we forget to invest in eternal plans. Invest in the kingdom of God. All of this earthly stuff is temporary. You don't see a U-Haul behind a funeral coach, behind a hearse. You don't get to take it with you into eternal life. You know, you, you, you just don't. All of these earthly treasures are, are temporary. The bottom line is if we are faithful in little, can we be faithful in, in much then? You know, that, that's what he's, he's getting at here. If a person is unfaithful in everyday things, how can you be faithful in spiritual things? Then we get just a little segment about serving two masters, and I think that's self-explanatory. We remember Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. One of Elaine Ross's favorite passages. Where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Who is he pointing fingers at again? The religious leaders. He says, you Pharisees are lovers of money. They disrespect those that are lesser than, again, a common theme in, in Luke. Lifting up the lowly, lifting up the disadvantaged and, and the marginalized. He says, you're lovers of money. You disrespect the lesser than. God knows your hearts is what he's saying. And God knows our hearts too. The law. 
um, it, it says since that time, since that time, what does that mean? It means since the time of John the Baptist's death, now Jesus is on the scene. We get a little bit about divorce, which is always used out of context. What Jesus is getting at is the Pharisees taught that a man could divorce his wife for anything, including little things. Maybe the man saw a prettier woman. Hmm, I think I'm going to divorce my wife. And the Pharisees went along with it. Well, my wife's a bad cook. I think I'll divorce her. And the Pharisees went went along with that. And, and so that's what Jesus is getting at. It, it was um, getting to be an issue that these men were, were just tired of, of a woman, and so they just got a divorce, and the church guys were going along with it. I think they needed a little premarital counseling. What, what do you think? Our last story is a big story. I hope you had a chance to look at my my post today about Hades that sheds a little bit of light on this, I think. The rich man and Lazarus. I've preached on this before. I think I've titled it a thin line, a thin line. Some of our older translations are going to give us the name of the rich man and call him Dives. Maybe you have that translation. If you do, shoot me a message. But in the newer translations, the rich man is not named. That's on purpose. Here, the poor man is named. Again, Luke is going to lift up those that are marginalized. And what is the poor man's name? Lazarus. Now, this is not the same Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. It's important, important for us to take note of that. Okay, This is a totally different Lazarus. And so the rich man, it tells us, is clothed in, in purple. Purple was an expensive cloth, and rich people wore it. Um, kings wore it. Purple is the color of royalty in Scripture. Uh, so purple cloth. He, he's got this purple robe, and he's got lots of stuff, and he eats high off the hog, and so does his dog. Here we see that Lazarus, he's got these open wounds. He's got sores all over. And he's laying at the rich man's gate, and the rich man's dog even comes and licks his sores. And he doesn't give any food to poor Lazarus. He's got it all, but he doesn't take care of Lazarus. All of a sudden, Lazarus dies, and angels carry him to Abraham's bosom. That old spiritual song, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, oh Lord, rock of my soul. You know, I used to sing that in Sunday school, had no idea what it meant, had no explanation whatsoever, but that's where it comes from, it is this story. That, that's where it comes from, rock of my soul. So we find out that the rich man dies also, and he goes to Hades. And he cries out, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, why don't you send Lazarus to, to dip his fingers in, in the cool water and come just put a little bit on my tongue so I won't be tormented, I won't be, be burned. And Father Abraham says, well, you know, you had many chances to take care of Lazarus in the other life, and you didn't. You had all of these chances to share your resources that you, you had, and you refused. And so Lazarus isn't going to come take care of you. Now, Hades. I had to do some research on, on Hades. Because when we think of Hades, we think of hell. Hades is actually a waiting place until the final judgment. And, and we can get um, into a great big old long theological discussion here. Uh, we don't have time for that tonight, but you can do some, some more um, research on that. 
But the bottom line in all of this chapter here, how are we going to spend our time and our talents and the things that God has provided for us? You know, it's okay to take care of self, but if we are greedy and um, self-absorbed and not loving our neighbor, again, common theme in Luke, right? Common theme uh, in Luke. It's how we live our life and how we, we share our, all of our, our resources. So Bobby Joe was just here um, videoing for Vicar Rick and us. So, you know, Bobby Joe is giving up her time and her talents and, and resources. How, how, we, how we share God's abundant gift in our life, especially in this season, but not just in this season. Probably more typical for us to do around the holidays, but you know, it's like integrity, who we are when nobody's looking, you know? So there you go. So what did you like about chapter 16? What did you wrestle with, the whole thing? Um, how was your day? Um, today, what did I do today? You know, I just kind of prepared for tonight. I didn't do a whole lot today. I had sinus stuff this morning. I'm feeling better now, um, but uh, yeah, and when I have a sinus headache and sinus gunk, I, I, I'm a little bit off with, with things. So, But anyway, feeling better. Um, so I want to, tomorrow, tomorrow, teaching about forgiveness and faith, chapter 17. So I have kind of a benediction. Actually, it's more of a commendation. Commendation we, we do as a final blessing um, at a funeral. And you will hear these words more at a Catholic mass, a Catholic funeral mass, um, more so than in Protestant churches. But I think Pastor Steve Quist, uh, he used to be at Ballotin here. He lives in Marshall now. He has used this before. It's called the Paradisium. Paradisium. So hear these words. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs greet you at your arrival and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels greet you. And like Lazarus, who was once poor, may you find eternal rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sleep well. Jesus loves you, so do I. We'll see you tomorrow.